Hey guys, if you're enjoying the content I'm putting up, be sure to subscribe so you always know when a new video pops up. Now that we got that part out of the way, let's get into the video. Final Fantasy XIV is a massive game with thousands of hours of content. What I'm going to do here is break down some of the major plot points for those of you who want to know more about Eorzea but may not have time to experience it all firsthand. This time we're covering the second part of the story of the Bajan Resistance and the Blades of Gunhilder. When you return to Gongos, Marsek is pleased to tell you that Geralt has done it. He's reforged enough of the Blades of Gunhilder to equip an entire squad of elite soldiers and it worked out just as Marsek and the others had hoped. Having the blades being reforged and the Queen's Guard restored helped motivate the resistance, making them believe that they can actually retake their homeland. In fact, they've already taken back an outpost in the Bajan Southern Front. Marsek sends you to the front line so you can see for yourself exactly how the fighting is going. When you reach the front, Basal Jin introduces you to the new Queen's Guard and you immediately see why they were able to motivate the soldiers. They look awesome and when you see them in action on the field you'll understand that they are far more than just flashy. They can really, really fight. And adding your battle prowess to theirs, Fazal Jin believes that it won't be long before you all take Castrum Lacus Latori back from the Legion. The Castrum is a fortress once called Alamu when it was under Bajran control. It was named after the eagles that used to live in the mountains beside it and it's the reason Basal Jin decided to call the mission to take it back Operation Eagle's Nest. He's eager to get you in the field, but Makoto wants to talk to you about the crystal focus that you had used to dive into Sid's memories before you run off and start destroying stuff. When you had used the crystal on Sid, you had drained all of the ether out of it, but Makoto discovered that it can absorb ether just like the aura site you had found in Ivalice, which means if you find an energy source that matches its ethereal frequency, you can refill it. But the crystals are extremely rare and getting enough to refill it may be impossible. However, there are currents of ether with the right frequency coming from the land in the areas around the front. The only problem is, they are in areas heavily occupied by Imperials. While it would be safer to wait until the fighting died down to charge the crystal, Mesija doesn't think the resistance can afford to wait. As the battles go on, more and more people will die, but she believes the crystal focus could help end the fighting faster, or at least ease the mental strain on the soldiers' minds, keeping them fighting at full force for longer. To speed the process of finding the locations with the needed ether, Sid's been working on making a tracking device. Makoto is going to go help him finish, but while she's gone, she wants you and Masija to check out a spot that she thinks has an ether current you can use. Before you head out, Marsek brings word that a few soldiers wanted to talk to you just to let you know what you'll be facing when you step on the battlefield. This won't be your first time fighting Garlean, so you should be well aware of how dangerous their Magitek can be and you put that knowledge to use, helping the resistance gain ground against the Legion. When you return from the fighting, Makoto has made it back with a shipment of Sid's ether monitoring devices. Those devices were brought by Lelegia, the overly talkative fangirl from the Ironworks. She brought sensors that can be set up next to the ether currents and can be activated from the base, letting you lock on to specific ether signatures that you might need. The process is both more complicated and time consuming than it sounds, but once you place a few of the sensors near some currents, Makoto can start the process of tracing the proper ether frequency needed to refill the focus. However, despite the Legion losing ground, the sites where the sensors need to be placed are still in Legion control lands, so Makoto asks you to place them for her since she can't exactly fight. You only have to deal with a small amount of soldiers since the resistance is doing more than enough to keep the Legion occupied. Once set, Makoto presses a button from the base and the device burrows underground. A pretty convenient way of making sure the Legion doesn't break the thing, and you head back to the base for your next assignment. When you make it back to the base, you see Masija getting harassed by soldiers who are angry that she's staying at the camp while they're all fighting. She's about to fight them, but Marsek shows up stopping them. But he promises that if the soldiers insult her again, he'll kill them himself. She's anything but grateful, and she makes that known as she heads off to talk to Makoto and the Legion. While Bajja had rose to prominence and from the outside looked like a nation where everyone thrived, it wasn't. There was a large gap between the nobles and the commoners, one that stayed even beneath imperial rule. Even though Marsek dreams of a united Bajja where everyone is equal regardless of birth, there are others who want to go back to the old ways. Masija had come from nothing, but when she was young the imperials saw her dedication to bettering herself and decided to pay special attention to her drawing even more ridicule from her more wealthy peers. Marsek hates how the other resistance soldiers treat her, but he has to look at the big picture. 
Disciplining soldiers for bigotry while they're in the middle of a battle could cause more problems than it fixes, and so, for now, he won't say anything about it, and he doesn't want you to either. Makoto promises to let you know as soon as the ether analysis is complete, but she does warn you that you will have to set more sensors even deeper in Legion territory. That'll have to wait until the resistance reclaims more ground from the Imperials, or you won't live long enough to place the devices, which means it's back to fighting you go. As the battle against the Legion continues, Makoto manages to find a third site that will greatly improve their chances of tracing the right type of ether. The site is located in some ancient Bajan ruins that date back to the third astral era, and are overrun with the undead so it'll be quite dangerous. But that doesn't even slow you down, and once you place the device, you return to yet another problem. While the device you planted is working fine, the one at the base is not getting any readings. The Legion knows what's wrong, and she can fix it but it'll take less time to simply go get a replacement part from Doma. Masija offers to go and get the device since with the machine down there's nothing for her to do, plus she wants to see Doma, and likely get away from the soldiers who treat her like crap because of her birth. Meanwhile, at the very ruins that you just left, the 4th Legion has uncovered the Save the Queen, the sword wielded by Queen Gunhilda herself, meaning that they are getting way closer to completing their goal. While Masija is away, the resistance pushes the Legion back even further. Very soon, they'll be driven back into Kashgrim and finally out of Bajda. Even more good news arrives after the device at the base is repaired. Makoto finally manages to track down the proper ether source needed to refill the crystal and restore its memory manipulating powers. Extracting the ether and restoring the crystal's functionality is delicate work, so Makoto and Masija are going to come with you this time, meaning you'll have to protect them. After you deal with some Legion soldiers who ambush your friends while they work, they get back to it, refilling the crystal. Once it's done, Masija takes it, pulling her gun on Makoto. You hold off the strong urge to kill the woman because you don't want to get your friend killed, and Masija, the Garlean spy, takes her. In all honesty, I don't really blame her. What's the point in risking your life fighting for people who want to restore a nation that doesn't even respect you? Turning on the Bajans? I can forgive that. Kidnapping Makoto? Not so much. You return to the base and let Marsik and the Blades know what happened. Marsik wants to make rescuing Makoto top priority and Basso Jin agrees, but first they have to find out if any other resistance members were working with Masija. To make matters worse, while he wants to save Makoto, he doesn't have the troops to spare. While the war is going well, the soldiers are already spread thin. Shifting their forces could cause them to lose ground. But the fact that they took Makoto alive means they need her for something, which gives you time to find out where she's being held. But we already know where they've taken her, and it's pretty obvious to be honest. Lelija uses the equipment to track the ether given off by the crystal that Masija stole, and she finds exactly what you feared. Makoto and the crystal are being held in Castrum Laka's Latori. Meanwhile, Makoto wakes, surrounded by Garlean soldiers and Masija. Masija doesn't waste any time, getting right to what she wants to know. She wants to know how Makoto can see the future. Makoto refuses to answer anything until the woman tells her exactly why she's working for the Empire. In truth, she simply trusts that Noah von Gebronk will build a nation of equality and fairness. Even though he is an Imperial, he doesn't judge those under him by anything other than their merits. He even runs the lands he rules in the same way, and since he's seeking to build his own nation, Masija thinks it'll be far better than the Bajja that persecuted her and those like her. Even Marsik and Basar Jin, who claim they want to build a better nation, are willing to sweep prejudices under the rug for the good of the nation which means no matter what they claim, their Bajja would treat Masija and those like her with the same disdain as the old Bajja had. And that disdain goes even deeper than any of you know. To prove how cruel Bajja nobility were, she tells Makoto the story of Queen Gunhilda and how her followers used and betrayed her. Before the fourth Umbral Calamity, Gunhilda's blades saw the end of their kingdom coming, so they came up with a plan to use the power of the Holy Blade Save the Queen to save Bajja. They would use the queen's body to channel the sword's power and summon a primal. The only problem was that if the queen used her body to summon a god, she would die. So instead, Gunhilda's blades took a lowborn shrine maiden and made her the stand-in for the queen. Wanting to serve her nation and stop the calamity, she did it without hesitation. However, instead of dying or being consumed by the power, she was able to channel it and remain herself because unbeknownst to the blades, the common-born woman they had chosen possessed the echo. Despite giving herself for her people, the fact that she was a commoner with the power of a god scared the blades and they murdered her. 
To make matters worse, they lied and said the woman had been consumed by the power and had to be put down before burying her with the blade, letting the world believe the lie. Masija doesn't give a direct answer as to how she knows this, but her claim that this was a family secret implies that she's a descendant of the sacrificed queen. Now that she's answered Makoto's question, she demands to know how she can see the future. Makoto only tells the woman a half-truth, but Masija has ways of making her talk, and they won't be pleasant. The time has come. Gunhilda's blades gather at your base and you all prepare to storm Castrum and remove the Legion from Bajan to save the nation and your friend. It won't be easy. The Castrum is run by a powerful mage and the warrior Lion Sus Helos is a battle-hungry lunatic who is so strong that I'd like to see him go one-on-one -on -one with Xenos. But that won't stop you. It's time to save Makoto. You and your allies cut a swath through the Legion's defenses, freeing prisoners and forcing some of the Legion's strongest warriors to retreat. However, Basar Jin thinks something's wrong. The fortress fell too easily, the soldiers retreated too fast, and there's still no sign of Makoto or Masija. Not until Masija brutally kicks her off of a balcony. She puts a blade to Makoto's neck and orders you to step forward and activate the crystal so the three of you can enter the memories of the Holy Blade. Makoto begs you to let her die instead of giving in, but you do as Masija orders, traveling into the Save the Queen's past and seeing the moment that Gunhilda's blades assassinated the Hero Queen. Even knowing what had been done to her, the Queen's spirit is okay with her death since it meant that she saved her people, but Masija appears beside her, whispering in her ear that her murder wasn't done to save her people. It was simply done out of spite. The rage that builds up in Queen Gunhilda is so great that Masija is able to channel her into the physical world through the power of the sword. Stepping out into the world directly in front of the reformed Queen's Guard who are wielding the same weapons they used to murder her pushes the Queen over the edge and she snaps using her power to temper each and every member of the Guard before turning her power on the rest of you. You hold off the attack as best you can while Marsek retrieves an injured Makoto but Queen Gunhilda's power is too much even for you. Fortunately, Bwagi of the Damascan Resistance shows up and shoots Masija, causing her to lose focus for a moment and allowing you all to escape. Back at the camp, you explain how Masija manipulated the memories of the Queen, causing her to turn against the Bajans, but that's not the worst part. Having never dealt with a Primal before, Marsek believes that the Blades can be saved, but despite advances that have been made on the subject, the only cure for tempering is death. With this new information, you head back to Gongos where reinforcements from Dalmasca have finally arrived and word is spread that the Domans are on their way as well. Until then, there is nothing left for you to do but plan your next move. Meanwhile, in Castrum, with access to the Primal, the commander Menenius believes that it will be easier to move forward with their plans. However, Lion warns him not to take Masija for granted, or their future victory may not be as certain as he thinks. This concludes the second part of the Save the Queen storyline. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on the next video.